Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, so today is birthday vibes for me. I'm sure you guys see me dancing on Instagram. Okay, I'm over here getting it in. And a lot of you guys were asking about this shirt. So what I want to let you guys know is that while I did like Teespring, I really didn't want to work with them anymore because I don't like the whole campaign thing. Where like if I run a campaign for between three to 10 days, they don't mail out or start printing out the shirts until the final day of the campaign. So some people are waiting upwards of 10 to 30 days to get a shirt. And so I just didn't like that. So for the past year, I've been working on my t-shirt website, which is lovelyteashop.com. I wanted to find a t-shirt company I could collab with to help make the t-shirts how I wanted them. You know, while Teespring did a good job, I like my bling, I like my pizzazz, I wanted a t-shirt company that could add glitter and metallics and things like that. So I found a black t-shirt company in the Twin Cities, so we are working together. So if you guys are interested in this design, this is it right here. It says, honey, but it turned out just beautiful. I've been getting props on this shirt all day. The shirt comes in different colors. We can get them for you, spaghetti strap, thick strap, t-shirt, sweatshirt. So those are just some of the options. And if you would like it in metallic instead of glitter, let us know. Just put everything you want in detail. All of the previous designs that I've had over the past few years, like the Dragon Ball T, the Hey Auntie shirt, um, You Can't Sip With Us, all of those shirts we can bling out with glitter, we can bling out with metallic. So if you're interested, just let me know. So all the information will be down below. Make sure you guys go ahead and check out the website. There'll be a lot of shirts updated on there at least once a month. We'll be coming up with new designs, new logos, new slogans. Thank you guys for the support and stay tuned for the video. All right, so I wanna come on here and talk about the whole Monique situation. So a lot of you guys have been asking me about this. If you guys don't know, she recently sat down with Comedy Hype on YouTube and they did a really good interview with her it was her and her husband Sydney and they basically talked about a lot of things Monique brought up the whole Oprah Winfrey situation how Oprah brought her mom and her brother on the show and how it's really exploitive she also talked about her issues with Lee Daniels she talked about Tyler Perry she talked about Steve Harvey and how basically he tried to play her and tell her to just you know walk a fine line and you know to stop doing too much only for him to be fired by the same powers that be. And then she also spoke on Charlemagne the God and said that basically he has helped to destroy the culture um, that is what we know today as hip-hop and media and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys these small snippets from the interview. To watch the full interview, make sure you go to Comedy Hype um, on YouTube. They have the full interview. Really, really good. Check these snippets out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Goldberg told me the salary she makes from The View, and that hurt my feelings that you've been there for 10 years and you accept them paying you that and you telling me don't worry about the little one coming up god damn if I ain't gotta be worried about you too because you accept that salary it makes it hard and what happens in our community they've got us chasing the bag and not principle and not integrity I've never met so many cowards in our black men in show business I've never met so many black men that have no goddamn backbone. And all of that start hitting and all of that start going on. I heard my brother with my own ears say, she's burned too many bridges. And I don't know if there's anything I can do for her. And that hurt my feelings because I'm like, brother, you never pick up the phone and say, hey, Mo, what's going on? Before you went on the air and you said to millions of listeners, she's burned too many bridges. You were a part of pushing that agenda before you even asked me what was going on. It's mine. <laughs> the Nord. You're advocating for mental health. He's big on that. That's his thing. Mm. <laughs> why, why, the why that response to him on that? That response to him on that is because I've seen and heard the destruction that that brother has done in our community. I've, I've heard the poison that he's pulled out over that air in our community. Now everyone's allowed to change, let me say that. Everyone can wake up and say, you know what, I now see it differently. But I think that the only way we make change in our community is at first acknowledge we were part of the damage. So I say Leonard and we laugh, but in all seriousness, I think that that brother paid a big part in the destruction of our community. 
honey. All right, so you guys just heard what Monique had to say. Monique was not here for the fuck shit, okay? She went in. So now, Charlamagne the God did reply back to her on The Breakfast Club. So I want you guys to go ahead and hear what Charlamagne the God had to say. Go ahead and check this out. But I think that the only way we make change in our community is at first acknowledge we were part of the damage. Mm. Acknowledge. Mm. All right, in addition to that... Uh, <laughs> Let him acknowledge. No, I'm going to finish, and then he can respond to everything. Uh, unlike Monique, I hold myself accountable and acknowledge my BS, but continue. All right, now Sydney did jump in and discuss Charlemagne and his lack of empathy. There's a level of perpetuation of fame and a lack of empathy that I've seen him indulge in. When I watched, you know, obviously Monique's interview, when you see him having the interview with Kanye, that man invites him out to his home. Then after interviewing with him, he's donkey of the day. There's a lack of empathy that this man gives to the community. So if you're an advocate for it, then that means you remove donkey of the day and you understand that people make mistakes. I mean, it's not a lack of empathy at all. I think there's more. I do an interview with Kanye West and then Kanye West goes to TMZ and says slavery was a choice. That's not donkey of the day, were you? All right, now there's more on you, Charlemagne, this yeah. is what Sydney had to say about you as far as why are you an authority figure speaking on behalf of black people? There's a level of consideration for people that I haven't seen him give because it's more about ratings, it would appear. There's a coarseness to his energy. There's um, a lack of connect to his people. And it's odd to me when I hear people and see him on CNN and they talking to him as if he's some authority. He hasn't had the tenure in this life to have the authority because when you are an authority on dealing with people, that same authority is accompanied by empathy. I've never said I was an authority figure, never claimed to be. Uh, I just, I'm, I've never claimed to be an expert in anything either. I'm just a man who has some experiences, but um, I'm praying for Monique. I want Monique to find the healing she needs. She's been talking about the same things and the same people for the last 15 years. I'm new to the conversation, but the Oprahs, the Tyler Perry, the Lee Daniels, everybody else is always the problem. And even if those people did her wrong, she got to let that hurt go because it's not good for her mental health. And no. I, re I really do pray that she finds it in her heart to forgive them because that's the only way she's going to find peace because I don't hear a woman who's at peace. You're not going to pray and for Sydney? And to forgive you also? You want her to forgive you as well? No. You're not going to pray for Sydney? For what? What am I praying for Sydney for? <laughs> yeah, what am I praying for? You pray for Monique? Just pray yeah, for Sydney. Listen, I pray for a lot of different people. But all right, so you guys just heard what Charlemagne said, and basically he said he's going to pray for Monique. He's tired of hearing her talk about the same thing. She's been talking about the same thing for the past 15 years. He's over it. He also took a little bit of personal responsibility for the role that he's played in certain things, and he also, you know, talked about his growth because, again, like I always say, people are allowed to grow and change, and that is one thing that Monique and Sydney did acknowledge. Now, I really did like the interview, and you guys know I've had my issues with just different things with Monique as far as how she approached certain things um last year like how she was you know condemning other black people but then not condemning Roseanne Barr for her racist statements or not condemning um Amy Schumer for just not being fucking funny you know what I'm saying so I've had my little issues I spoke about the whole Netflix thing and why I was not going to cancel my Netflix but I can be unbiased enough to sit down and listen to Monique and see where Monique is coming from and Monique was speaking a lot of truth in that interview okay regardless if you agree with her or not she's speaking a lot of truth and she hit home with a lot of points okay but one thing I will say is this, the Oprah situation, I do feel like that was wrong. That was all the way wrong. It wasn't needed. Don't reach out to me as a friend and say you're going to look out for me and not interview my family, then turn around and do it. So I feel like she was very right to be offended and to be very frustrated with the situation that Oprah put her in because she said, you know, once that interview went viral, she had to deal with people coming at her at the store saying that your mom is not shit. Who wants to hear that 24-7? Now, she also talked about Steve Harvey. Now, as far as the Steve Harvey thing, I did appreciate how she addressed that. Even though she has her issues with her brother Steve, she still stated that at the end of the day, he had one of the highest rated talk shows. And for them to fire him at, at his height says a lot. And that's where the conversation should be. Not the fact that him and Monique got into it. It should be, why does this black man who had a successful show, why is his show canceled? Meanwhile, you have other races of people whose shows are not not as successful, whose ratings are not as high, but they still have their talk shows. So she made some really good points with that. Now, as far as the whole Charlemagne the God thing, 
you know, like I said before, you know, Charlemagne has definitely grown throughout the years, but he has done some things, you know what I'm saying, to set folks back a few years. He has done a lot of things in the past to, you know, bring down people, to be condescending to people, to treat people bad, but Charlemagne has grown from that. You know, he sounds like he's still kind of upset with Monique, but he said he's going to pray for her. We'll see if he does that. If he does, he does. If he doesn't, that's their business. But I think, you know, Charlemagne is just who he is. You know what I'm saying? He understands where he came from and where he's going but Monique made some very very valid points I think she made valid points talking about each and every individual but I also believe this I feel like at this point Monique is going to have to decide you know does she want to be a part of the Hollywood machine because the route that she's going nobody in Hollywood is going to you know really fool with her like that she might get indie projects but as far as the money that she's looking for she's not going to get that you know and it was really sad to see her cry about the whole Whoopi Goldberg thing because you could tell at one point in time her and Whoopi were tight and you know she looked up to Whoopi but for Whoopi to take the pay that she's supposedly taking Monique feels like that's not fair now I did go look at what Whoopi was making on The View they're saying that she makes five million dollars a year which is absolutely nothing to sneeze at but compared to what her other co-host makes that is something to sneeze at so I definitely see Monique's point it's just that unfortunately with you know people of color Hollywood was not meant for us anyways so they feel like anytime they throw us a bone they write us a part they give us a role we should just be grateful and she's saying that you shouldn't be grateful we should get what is fair but again we don't make the rules so Monique is going to have to decide does she want to stay and play the Hollywood game does she still want to be a part of Hollywood does she want to take on these projects or does she just not want to and I think for her sanity and for her happiness she may just want to just stay away from Hollywood altogether and not get involved anymore in anything you know with Hollywood because it just seems like it's not going her way and nobody's really listening to her as far as people who can make change yes the people in the streets might agree with her we might have her back we might see where she's coming from but if the people up here the people who cut the checks the people in Hollywood are not willing to make a change there's not too much we can do the only thing we can do is speak with our pockets and not go support certain movies or certain actors or certain actresses or certain shows that's the only way we can make a difference but unfortunately a lot of us are so divided I don't even see that happening and one thing that she talked about that I really love when she was saying that we live in this new culture of I got to get the bag anything for the bag. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to do me, you do you. And that's such a selfish mentality. You have people who are literally doing anything for clicks, views, follows, likes, hearts. It's like Instagram likes are almost like money to some people. They're not, it's nothing tangible, but you know, somebody can get enough likes on something or go viral. It really does something to people. So she's very right when she says that we live in a really bad culture where everything is about the bag and it's not about looking out for the next generation or looking out for that young girl or young guy behind us. Because imagine if the people before us had the same mentality of, oh, I'm going to do what I got to do to get that bag fuck who's coming behind me, we wouldn't be where we're at today. If it wasn't for people making the sacrifices and putting themselves out there and, you know what I'm saying, going hard and doing a lot of things in entertainment for free before there was really a big check to be had, we would not be where we're at today. So the fact that many of us are living comfortably and we've been able to eat off this thing called entertainment, but then in the same breath turn around and say we don't give a fuck about the next generation behind us, that's all the way out of pocket. So I really appreciate Monique for speaking some real stuff. We need to stop with the selfishness. We need to stop with the whole I'ma do me and F everybody else. I think that mentality is whack. You're always supposed to reach behind and help those. I'm not saying you gotta help everybody out there because not everybody's deserving of your energy or your help. But you know deep down inside those people who are genuine, who really want to succeed, who really want you to mentor and help them, those are the folks that you put under your wing and you look out for. You know what I'm saying? And I remember watching another interview with Aerie Spears and he was talking about how even in the black comedy community, a lot of folks really don't help each other. You know, while Kevin Hart's writers and, you know, his the, his boys are always having his back and saying, oh, Kevin is this, Kevin is that. And this is no shade towards Kevin Hart. But what Aerie Spears was saying is true. If Kevin is so much your boy, why is he not writing you into his movies? I know Kevin Hart is your man. So you ride for Kevin Hart. That's some inside shit. But it kills me the loyalty some of you dudes have when it's like when you use that word friend. Yo, that's my man. Three of the funniest comedians I know, Alex Thomas, Chris Spencer, and Daryl Heath, they know Eddie Murphy. They're friends with Eddie Murphy. They've called me on several occasions and went, yo, Eddie's having a, uh, watching the fight at the house. Eddie's a huge fight fan. Yo, come to the house, yo, and you know, hang out with Eddie. 
I would love to hang out with Eddie Murphy. But at the same time, I'm not going to be anybody's court jester. You know, they go over there, they make Eddie laugh, and no disrespect to any of them. And I hope if Chris, Daryl, or Alex see this, y'all don't take this the wrong way. But I know y'all go over there, y'all make Eddie laugh, y'all have fun with Eddie. And I can't do that. I can't be in front of Eddie Murphy playing court jester. And it's like, if we funny to you, where's the show that's produced by you with us in it? Where's the movie roles in your movie? I mean, come on, man. If we really going to play this game of that's my man, I respect y'all, I respect your talent, help niggas eat. White boys do it for each other all the time. Nick Swanson, David Spade, uh, Rob Schneider, they stay in Adam Sandler's movies. How come if they feed each other, we can't feed each other? Why is he not making productions and bringing you on the road? Why are y'all not his opening acts? So it's like, you know, you can be friends with somebody, but they only want you to grow to a certain level and they don't want you to surpass them. So it's like they're only going to, you know, they're going to act like they're helping you. Like there's a meme that I ran across the other day and was so true. People will act like they're helping you. They'll reach their hand out knowing they got a whole ladder behind them because they really don't want to help you. So that's the mentality that we have to break away from. And I think that that's what Monique was trying to get to with everything she was saying. You know what I'm saying? We have to help each other. We have to be there for each other. We have to support each other. Because in the future with everybody having this whole, it's about me, you do you, I'm about my bag, fuck the people. There's not going to be anything left for the next generation. Because everybody in this generation is so focused on me, me, me. So the whole situation was really, really interesting. But like I said, I really enjoyed her interviews. And I really enjoyed what Monique had to say. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation. Once again, concerning Monique and what she had to say about her fellow people in entertainment and then how did you guys feel about Charlamagne the guy's response where he said that you know Monique needs to get over it she's been saying the same thing for 15 years and that basically he's gonna pray for Monique so let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment all right deuces